sports fans, we are ready for NFL picks for week number three in the league where they play. I said in the league where they play. In the league where they play. For pain. Let's get right to it. Hard to believe we're already in week three of the NFL, as the season always seems to fly right by. Week three, let's start with the Thursday night game. Let's go to the dog pound in Cleveland, where the Cleveland Browns are minus three against the New York Jets. When's the last time the Cleveland Browns were favored, by the way? Browns favored here at home. Cleveland, 0-1-1, lost to New Orleans, a game they could have easily won. Missed field goals, missed, uh, you know, extra points, just total debauchery in the kicking game. Cleveland could have won this game. They could have won week one if they made a field goal. So Cleveland looks like they're much improved, but they still can't get that elusive W. They're getting close, though. The Jets, they're one and one. They had the awesome week one against the Lions. They came home to play the Dolphins, and the Jets went boom. Listen you got to give the Jets a break. I know a lot of people here in New York had them going to the Super Bowl. They were going undefeated. Let's calm down. I think the Jets are going to be improved. Donald looks like he can play. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's some growing pains here. Not entirely shocked that the Dolphins beat him. Remember, I picked Miami last week. Not entirely shocked that Miami went into New Jersey and beat the Jets. It's going to take some time. I think the Jets are improving. But let's give them some time, including the quarterback. As far as this game, the conservative way to play this game is, you know, play him as one of your teams in a two-team teaser. Move the line to nine. You get six points in a two-team teaser. Move the line to nine and take the Jets. You have to think this game is close. Even if Cleveland finds a way to win, they don't score a lot of points, Cleveland. What did they score? 21 the first week. I think, what, 18 the second week. You're getting nine points right off the bat. you got to figure it's going to be a low-scoring defensive game. Game could go either way. I mean, a very hard game to pick straight up. Very hard game to pick with the spread. I love my two team teasers with six points. I would move the line to nine and take the New York Jets. I think the game will be close on Thursday Night Football. Let's go to the Sunday games. Let's go to Philadelphia and how I love those Philadelphia fans. So passionate about all their sports teams. As the Philadelphia Eagles are minus six against the Indianapolis Colts. Eagles down to one and one, lost to Tampa Bay. Wentz will be back at quarterback. Eagles have a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover. Not, you can't be too shocked by that either. Can't be too shocked. They just won the Super Bowl. I mean, haven't been firing on all cylinders the first two weeks. Haven't had their starting quarterback. You get Wentz back. You're home this week. Colts, one and one. Nice job by the Colts going into Washington and winning. Listen, I don't think Washington's great, but I did think Washington was going to win that game. Colts held Washington out of the end zone in their own building. So the Colts played some good defensive football. You know what luck, the Colts always have a chance. I am going to, again, use this, team, uh, use this game as a two-team teaser. I am going to move the line to pick them and take Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia bounces back. I think they respond at home. The Colts, back-to-back -back weeks, they're going to win on the road. I don't see that happening. I think the Eagles respond in a big way. Wentz back at quarterback, off the loss. I don't believe the Colts can win two games in a row on the road. I'm going to take the Eagles. I'll move the line to pick them. I love them that way in a two-team teaser. I'll take the Eagles. That's pick number two. Pick number three. Let's go down to northern Florida. We have the Jacksonville Jaguars, a minus six against the Tennessee Titans. Jacksonville said, New England who? We're the new top cats in town. As Jacksonville went to 2-0 and as they beat New England, they did it without Fournette, by the way, which was impressive. Fournette questionable this week. Tennessee, 1-1, one one, had a nice win against uh, Houston, despite Mariota not playing. So Tennessee got up to 1-1. One one. I'll tell you, Jacksonville... Looks like they are one of the best teams in the AFC. They look like they're one of the best teams in the AFC. And two years ago, I, I would have called you crazy if you said, uh, you know, if you told me I was going to say that. But Jacksonville has come so far. They have the defense, they have the running game. Quarterback has been playing better. We were all over Bortles for years. He's been playing better. 
Jacksonville looks like one of the best teams in the AFC, and they proved it last week against New England. Again, this game cries moving the line for a two-team teaser. You get six points. The line is six. Move the line to pick them. Take Jacksonville. You have the home field. You got them at pick them. They're one of the best teams in the AFC. I don't think Mariota's even going to play this week for Tennessee. Can Tennessee now go on the road with a backup quarterback and win against this ferocious defense? Fournette, we'll see about him. But I got to like Jacksonville. What's there not to like about them off the big win against New England? So I like Jacksonville there. That is pick number three. Pick number four. Let's go down to Hot Atlanta. Where the Atlanta Falcons are minus three against the New Orleans Saints. Saints up to 1-1 one and one as they barely beat Cleveland and did not look good doing it. Atlanta, 1-1, one and one, held on to beat Carolina. They almost let this game slip away. Atlanta had a 14-point lead, hung on at the end. Atlanta's got a bad habit of doing that. We know they have all sorts of talent. They have a lot of injuries now, Atlanta. This is a big rivalry down south. I just have not liked the way New Orleans has played the first two weeks. They lose to Tampa Bay at home. Then they Barely beat Cleveland and didn't look good at all for a lot of that game. I know this is a big rivalry. I know the game's usually close. The spread's only three, but I think Atlanta is going to find their way through in this game. I'm going to take the Falcons to win by about, oh, I don't know, four points to a touchdown somewhere in there. But I think the Falcons have shown me more than New Orleans so far. I have not been impressed with the Saints at all. They were so lucky to win last week. I'm going to take the Falcons there. That is pick number four. Pick number five. Let's go down to Texas where the Houston Texans are minus six against the New York Giants. Texans 0-2, lost to Tennessee. What was Watson doing at the end of this game? What was he doing? They're down three points. You got to get rid of that ball. He took forever to get rid of it. Then he, I think, crossed the line by the time he threw the ball. The time had run out. I mean, Watson, what are you doing? Watson right now looks... Rusty. Remember, he's coming off a serious injury. Missed a lot of time last year. I mean, he hasn't even played a full season. He's a young quarterback. He looks rusty right now. Now, the Texans, they did play the first two games on the road. At New England, at Tennessee. Now they come back home. That is a positive. I do think the Texans are going to be good, but they really need to win this game. You cannot afford to go to 0-3. 1-2, and hey, you can recover from that. 0-3, you're in for a lot of trouble. So I think Houston really needs this game. Speaking of really needing the game, how about the New York football Giants? 0-2, lost to Dallas, and they were putrid on offense. They lost 20-13, to but the score is not indicative of how bad the Giants played. That game was 20-3 with less than five minutes to go. The Giants' offense was, and I know the Cowboy defense has improved, and we'll get to them later. The Giant offense the first two weeks of the year has been abysmal, atrocious. The offensive line, again, gave up 100 sacks last week. It's been a problem. It continues to be a problem. And what's with Eli Manning with that scrunched up face all the time, like that expressionless face, like he's got that silly little face all the time. And listen, Eli's won two Super Bowls, and in a lot of ways, Eli has been a better playoff quarterback than Peyton. I mean, we know Peyton's the, one of the greatest regular season quarterbacks ever, but he stumbled a lot in the playoffs. Eli has been good in the playoffs for the most part. He has two Super Bowls, but I don't know. I mean, it might be time to just uh, say goodbye to Eli Manning. I mean, I know it's not all his fault. The offensive line is atrocious, but the Giants look putrid on offense, just terrible. The Giants, you stink! You stink! I mean, how bad were they the first two weeks of the year? Last week, you're sitting there with five minutes to go on the Sunday night game, and here on the East Coast, it's like, you know, what is it, midnight, and the Giants got three points on the board. The offensive line can't block anyone. They're giving up 100 sacks. Eli Manning's got that, that scrunched up face, like, like no reaction from him at all. I mean, oh my goodness. Terrible performance by the Giants. And you think I could take them here under no circumstances. Again, the line is six. Move it to pick them in a two-team teaser and take the Texans at home. I have to think the Texans at home are going to respond against a giant uh, offense. They can't block anybody. You can't block, you can't win. You can't protect your quarterback, you can't win. I gotta like the Texans. I think their defense will come alive this week. 
with Watt and Clowney and Merciless and the whole nine yards. I think Houston will roll in this game. I have seen enough of the Giants. I think after this year, you, you know, do away with Eli Manning, draft a young quarterback to go with, you know, Beckham and your young receiver. I mean, the Giants are just such a mess on offense and the offensive line atrocious. Terrible. So I'll take the Texans there. That's pick number five. Pick number six. Let's go out to Seattle, the great Northwest, where the Seattle Seahawks are minus one and a half against the Dallas Cowboys. Seattle 0-2, lost to Chicago. What has happened to the Seahawks? They do not look like the same team at all. Now, I know they played their first two games on the road, but they are a mess, Seattle. Another team with offensive line problems, can't protect the quarterback, can't run the ball. The defense is nowhere near what it used to be. You can't expect Russell Wilson to do it all. They lost a lot of weapons on the outside. Seattle is an absolute mess. Now, they do have those great home fans, but there's only so much they can do. They're not playing on the field. Not liking what I see at all from the Seattle Seahawks. Dallas 1-1 one one, beat the Giants. This was a nice bounce-back win for Dallas after the horrific game down in Carolina. Listen, Dallas's defense is much improved. It's, it's funny. For years, Dallas was an offensive team, couldn't stop anybody. Now they look like they're more of a defensive team and not as explosive on offense. Dallas definitely on the front, you know, definitely in the linebackers, definitely much improved. We'll see about the secondary. So far, the defense has been good. Offense, now listen, they did some good things against the Giants. Prescott did some good things running. Elliott running the ball, protected well despite the center being out. They really deserve to win that game against the Giants, really beat up the Giants on both sides of the ball for much of that game. So that was a nice bounce back win for Dallas. Again, I'm going to move the line to 7.5 here and take the Cowboys, thinking this game will be close. I do not trust Seattle at all. It's even, uh, even though they're at home, I still don't trust them at all. They, they don't score a lot of points. And Dallas's defense looks good to me. So I think this game will be close either way. So I saw enough from Dallas last week and their defense to think they can do enough to hang in this game, even on the road. I'll take Dallas plus 7.5. That's pick number 6. Pick number seven, let's go to the Motor City in Detroit with the New England Patriots, a minus seven against the Detroit Lions. New England one and one, the loss to Jacksonville. New England signs Josh Gordon, I didn't see that coming. Detroit 0-2, oh lost to San Francisco. Listen, they were down 30-13 to in this game. They did make a comeback, they did make it interesting, but I think it's going to be a long year for Detroit. I think they're the worst team in that division. Their defense is absolutely horrible. So far, their defense smells. It's supposed to be improved, their defense smells. Smells. They might do some things in the passing game with Stafford, but they don't have enough defense. I think they're the worst team in that division behind, you know, Green Bay, Minnesota, and Chicago. I think they're the worst team in that division. I certainly do not like them here. New England coming off a loss. How many times does New England lose two in a row? And you think they're going to lose to Detroit? That's not happening. Move the line to one. Again, perfect game for a two-team teaser. You get six points, you move this line to one. All New England has to do is win. I have no faith in the Lions that they're going to beat New England. And New England's coming off a loss. you got to be kidding me. I like New England all day in this one. That's pick number seven. Pick number eight. Let's go to Tampa Bay. The surprising Bucks with the Pittsburgh Steelers are favored. Minus one and a half against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa. Tampa 2-0 beat Philadelphia. Fitzpatrick looks amazing. I mean, Tampa Bay is surprised so far of the early year. And then you got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, one and one. Lost to Kansas City, and their defense got shredded. I mean, torn apart. Again, at home. The last two games the Steelers played at home going back to the playoffs last year, they've given up four billion points. They gave up a million points to Jacksonville in the playoff game last year, and they gave up 42 big ones you know, this week as Kansas City dropped the big bag of goodies on them. What a pathetic display of defensive football for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I know Mahomes looks great, and that chief offense is awesome, and we'll get to them in a second. And that was a nice win for Kansas City, and they look real good offensively. Quarterback's amazing. The Pittsburgh Steelers, the writing's on the wall. The writing is on the wall. Listen, they're going to score their points. They'll get Bell back. Brown will get going. They'll score. They scored 30 in this game. You score 30 points at home, you should win. You should win, not lose by 12. The defense is awful. Now, 
Last year when they had Shazier playing defense, the defense was good. He got hurt. The defense has gone completely off a cliff, and it's no better this year. And Shazier's out for this year. I'm glad to see him walking. We don't know if he's ever going to play again. The Steeler defense is a wreck. Bud Dupree, who they picked in the top 10 a few years ago, looks like an absolute bust. A bust. Why in the world they ever took him? When they drafted him, like, Bud Dupree? Why are they taking this guy from Kentucky? And, you know, he was one of these guys with potential, and this is his contract year, where you can send him to another team because he looks like a bust. Steelers have spent so much money in the secondary, added all these new players, and they got torched last week. It was like Godzilla just rampaging through Tokyo, just burning it up with his flames of fire. That's how bad the Steeler defense was last week. They didn't do anything to throw Mahomes off his game. I mean, what an embarrassing performance. The Steelers secondary, awful. No pass rush. Uh, disappointing, you know, players like Bud Dupree. I mean, just awful schemes. You know, uh, you know they can never beat New England in the playoffs because of this. New England always roasts them in the playoffs. The Steelers play the same defense year after year against Brady, and year after year he throws up five touchdowns and no interceptions against them. So the Steelers have not learned their lesson. They didn't replace, you know, they didn't replace Shazier in the offseason. They didn't draft anyone. They added, you know, Bostic from the Colts. He's he's okay at best. That's not gonna not gonna do it. Steeler defense, the writing's on the wall. They might win their games. They even make, might make the playoffs. They'll score their points. The defense is going to kill them in the long run. The writing is on the wall. How are they favored in this game? I have no idea. On the road, Tampa Bay's 2-0. Again, move the line to 7.5. You get Tampa Bay, who's on fire right now, and you get the home field. And you trust that steal of defense? Not me. I'll take Tampa Bay. That's pick number 8. Pick number 9. Let's go out to the desert in Arizona where the Chicago Bears are minus six against the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals 0-2 lost to the Rams. Cardinals look like one of the worst teams in football. I have no problem saying that right now. Bears 1-1 one one beat Seattle. How ferocious is that Chicago defense? And boy, the, the, the networks love Mac. They can't get enough of Mac on every station. Everywhere you go, you got pictures of Mac, you got sound bites from Mac, you got Mac making plays. I don't know why the Raiders ever let him go. I, the Raiders need defensive help. Why they let him go, I have no idea. But he looks awesome with the Bears. The Bears' defense looks really good. You know the Bears are always good on defense. They're known for their defense. They have a history of defense. How good is this offense going to be? You know, the quarterback does some good things. He does some bad things. But the defense should be good. Bears are known for the defense. I mean, what did Sean Connery uh, say in the Untouchables? That's the Chicago way. That's the Bear way. Defense, defense, defense. Bears look much improved this year. Again, the line is sitting there at six. What do you do? Two-team teaser. You got Chicago pick them. You think Chicago's going to lose to Arizona? As a matter of fact, half the crowd in Arizona will probably be Bear fans. The Bear defense will eat up Arizona and Bradford or whoever else checks into the game at quarterback for the hapless Cardinals. Bears, that's pick number nine. Pick number ten. Let's go to Kansas City, Arrowhead Stadium, and some barbecue. Where the Kansas City Chiefs are minus six against the San Francisco 49ers. Niners one and one beat Detroit, was blowing out Detroit, then got sloppy late in the game. Kansas City, how about them? How about the Chiefs? 2-0, and oh, beat the Chargers on the road in week one, and then go to Pittsburgh and beat the Steelers. Mahomes sets a record. He has four billion touchdown passes in two games. The guy throws an absolute laser beam. The guy is a stud. The guy is a franchise quarterback. The chief offense looks awesome. And the thing about Mahomes is he's such a young player, you can now start adding to your defense. You can put some money into your defense. You don't have to pay Mahomes right away. So the Chiefs look like they got an absolute star here. Now I'm sure he's going to have his growing pains eventually, but right now he looks like an absolute stud. Time to give the Chiefs some credit. I mean, they jettisoned Alex Smith uh, out of there after making the playoffs last year. A lot of teams would not have done that to go with a young kid. Well, they made the right move. This kid is an absolute stud. The offense is amazing. And now they come home for their home opener. Listen, I think the Niners are improved, but much like week one when I said I didn't like the Niners against the Vikings in that spot, 
I don't like the Niners here in Arrowhead against the Chiefs. The Chiefs are showing me a lot right now. Again, the spread six. It's calling for that two-team teaser. Move the line to pick them. Take the Chiefs. You take one other team and you're in business. I'm telling you, the two-team teasers have worked like magic for me the last few years. I'm not a big, you know, three-team teaser guy or four-team teaser or super teaser. I know a lot of you guys do well with that. I am more of a two-team teaser guy, six points. You get two teams, whatever two you like, and you move the line that way. I've done very, very well the last two years like that at least. All right, so I'm going to take the uh, Chiefs there. That is pick number 10. Pick number 11, let's go to Minnesota, where the Minnesota Vikings are minus 16 and a half against the Buffalo Bills. The spread's 16 and a half. Do, do I have to tell you about Buffalo, how bad they've been? 0-2, lost to the Chargers, the Bills. What a nightmare. And now they're going to throw this young quarterback into, into the fire. I mean, what do they expect from him with this hapless team? McCoy's hurt. I mean, just a disaster up in Buffalo. Minnesota 1-0-1 tied Green Bay. Oh, my goodness, this game. Did you watch this game? Missed field goals, penalties at the end. I mean, Green Bay could have won. Minnesota could have won. Matthews, another late hit. Oh, goodness. Uh, but they end up in a tie there. I'll tell you, i probably being a little hard on Minnesota here. I thought their defense would play better last week with Rodgers being hurt and not as mobile. I thought Minnesota's defense would play better. Didn't like the way they played on defense at all in that game, but they did get the tie at Lambeau Field in just a wild game. Listen, you could pick your score in this game. I think Minnesota might shut out Buffalo in this game. This has like, this is like a 34 to like 3 game. This, this could be like a, a 28 nothing game, Minnesota. Minnesota can pick the score. The game, the game is going to be over at the half. Minnesota's defense will create a lot of turnovers. Minnesota will mash Buffalo. There is no way in the world Buffalo's going into Minnesota and winning. Take the Vikings any way you want. Vikings all day. That's pick number 11. Pick number 12 is an interesting game here. Let's go down to Carolina where the Carolina Panthers are minus three against the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati is surprised 2 0, beat Baltimore on Thursday night football. Carolina 1 1, lost to Atlanta. No Olsen. That's a major loss when Olsen's not in the lineup for Carolina because Cam Newton really likes to go to him. This is a very bizarre game, a very bizarre game because I don't know how good Cincinnati is. And Carolina with, without Olsen, I don't know what you're going to get from them. To me, this would probably be a throwout, but if I had to pick the game for the show here, I would move the line to nine and take a chance with Cincinnati just off of what they did the last two weeks. That's going to be a close game. I don't love the game. It's a very strange game. If you like Carolina, I couldn't argue with you. But I'll go Cincinnati plus nine reluctantly there. That's not one of my favorite games, though, but that's pick number 12. Pick number 13, another bizarro game. With the Green Bay Packers, a minus three at the Washington Redskins. Green Bay 1-0-1. I mentioned they tied Minnesota in just a bizarre game. Washington 1-1, one one, lost to Indianapolis at home. Oh, my goodness. No touchdowns against Indianapolis in your building, Washington, after you went on the road and had a nice win in Arizona. You come home, and you can't score against the Colts in your building, and you put up nine lousy points. Nine points, and I know the Colts have luck back, but the Colts' defense shut you down? The Colts' defense gave up 30-some to Cincinnati. Well, what are they now, the 85 Bears? Oh, Washington, I'll tell you, another one that can never get out of their own way. And ever since that imbecile Schneider took over the team, a once-proud franchise has gone completely downhill. Schneider, sell the team, please, and get somebody else in there. Washington has such a proud tradition they have such a proud history. And then he bought the team and they can't do anything. They can't even score a touchdown at home against the Colts. Embarrassing. This game is strange because the line's only three. I mean, you look at this game and you say, Washington just lost at home to the Colts 21-9 or whatever the score was. Green Bay's 1-0-1. They have Rodgers on general principle you think Green Bay would win why is this spread only three so I'm gonna I have a feeling about this game just like I had a feeling last week about Tampa Bay I have a feeling this game is gonna be closer than what most people think 
So I'm going to move the line to nine and take a shot with Washington. Again, I do not love this game. But for the purpose of the show, I'm going to I like taking home teams with a lot of points. I like doing that in my teaser. Now, I, I'll predict one thing here. Washington will get in the end zone at least once. I will predict that. Take that to the bank. Oh, but Washington, show me some guts this week, you gutless, gutless team. They were so gutless last week. I mean, no heart whatsoever. Nine lousy points at home. I mean, you get 90,000 loyal fans there in Washington, and that's what you give them? Nine lousy points? I'm going to reluctantly take Washington Nash. Hope they show some pride. That's pick number 13. Pick number 14. This is another strange game where the Baltimore Ravens are at home. Minus five against the Denver Broncos. Baltimore 1-1 one one, lost to Cincinnati on Thursday Night Football. Denver up to 2-0, won two home games, came back and beat Oakland. Oakland was winning this game for much of the game, dominating the game, and Denver had a furious comeback, as they do a lot in the Mile High City. I think a lot of teams get tired in that altitude, and Denver came back and won. This is such a bizarre game because this is Denver's first road game. Baltimore, you don't know what they are. They beat Buffalo, and they lost to say this, is a, this to me could be a throwout for purposes of the show, just like the last two picks. I'm going to move the line to pick them and take Baltimore. I think Denver is due for a loss, especially being their first road game. I want to see Keenum on the road do it. Baltimore is usually a good defensive team at home. They're usually a bully team at home. Ravens off a tough loss, long week. Denver has the long travel. I'm going to go with the Ravens there. That's pick number 14. And pick number 15, let's go down to South Florida where the Miami Dolphins are minus three against the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders 0-2, a disappointing 0-2, lost to Denver. Week 1, they're winning at the half against the Rams, fall apart in the second half. They're dominating Denver in Week 2 and fall apart at, again at the end of the game. So they're 0-2. I mean, Max having a great year with Chicago. That's got a sting, even though Gruden's saying, you know, I love the trade for the, first, you know, for the two first-round picks. Raiders, oh my goodness, so a lot of bad stuff there in Oakland. You know Chucky's going to have them playing hard, though. Miami, what a story so far with them. 2-0, and went into New York and beat the Jets. Nice job by the Miami Dolphins. Nice job. They're a surprise right now. i got to go with Miami here. Until Oakland finishes a game, I'm going to go against them. And Oakland's got a long travel down to South Florida. You figure the Dolphins are all pumped up being 2-0 and at home. Raiders got to show me they can finish these games before I pick them. They've had the better of the play in the first half. They've petered out in the second half, so i gotta, I got to see that they can actually finish these games. I'm going to take the Dolphins. That's pick number 15. And the final pick, the Battle of Los Angeles with the L.A. Rams, are minus 7 against the L.A. Chargers. Rams 2-0, blew out Arizona. The Rams look like one of the best teams in football, one of the best teams in the NFC. They have it all. Offense, defense, special teams, they got it all. The Rams are a contender right now. Chargers, they are 1-1. One one. They beat Buffalo. This is, I'll tell you what I like in this game. The over and under is 47.5. You use that in a two-team teaser. You move it down to 41.5. You don't think these two teams are going to score more than 41.5 points? These two teams put up a lot of points in bunches, especially in nice weather in Los Angeles. So that's the way I like this game. Forget the spread and all that. I think the Rams are a little better, and the Chargers always seem to find a way to lose these type of games, and Bosa's out. So if I had a lean, I'd go uh, Rams. But I really like the over and under here. Move the line to 41.5 in a two-team teaser and play the over. These two teams could have that by the uh, end of the first half. So I really like the over in that game in a teaser. So that's how I would play this week. I had two good weeks to start off the year. 11-5 and five the first week, 12-4 and four the second week, 23-9 and nine the first two weeks. Can't complain about that. And you know, I always get better as the season goes on. So there you go. You guys are all caught up. You guys are all set. Hope you guys are enjoying the game. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. Pick a lot of winners. Make a lot of money. I'll talk to you guys next Tuesday. Sorry it took me so long to post this week. Had a few things to do yesterday. But I'll be back next Tuesday. Enjoy the games. Make a lot of money. Pick a lot of winners. Talk to you then. Take care.